in astronomy, we have a really cool model, I think, that, that explains how everything we're made of got to be. So that's, I, I think it's really something quite powerful. And um, it's sort of explained well by this idea that we're all made of stardust. So this is how the model actually works. This is sort of, this is the idea. We've been sort of hinting at it in the past uh, videos. So first of all, we have the Big Bang Theory. So the Big Bang itself, what does that do? Well, that does a lot of things, but it basically one of the things it does for us that's important is it makes the hydrogen gas. Oops, I can't seem to spell right now. So it makes the hydrogen gas. And of course, then those hydrogen atoms, those end up combining to form stars. And we've talked about that process just before. Another thing that happens then is the stars, those undergo nuclear fusion and they fuse hydrogen to helium. And then of course they, they fuse higher and higher elements. So for example, they'll fuse helium to carbon or oxygen and they can make dot 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 all the way up to iron. Um, iron is written F-E. Now what's kind of interesting is that stars can't, can't uh, on their own, normally, sort of naturally, they have a lot of trouble fusing anything higher than iron. In other words, it doesn't have enough pressure or temperature in order to make iron uh, fuse into something else. It's not energetically favorable to do that. So the question might be, well, how then do all the elements higher than iron get made? Because we sort of explained at least in theory, um, how the Big Bang, well, at least we haven't explained it in detail, of course, but it can be explained. Maybe I'll do another video on it. That would be interesting, actually, to go through how the Big Bang actually made the hydrogen gas, how we think that might have happened. But you have to trust me, the Big Bang made the hydrogen, so we think. Then the stars, they fuse the hydrogen to the helium, and, and helium to carbon and oxygen, and higher and higher and higher, all the way up to iron. After that, it's not energi energetically favorable, uh, in order to, well, it's not energetically favorable to fuse anything higher than iron. So in order to have elements higher than iron, you have to have extra neutrons sitting there. So we call these things R processes for, you know, rapid processes. And we have also uh, other types of processes. But the main thing is the, the main way that iron can be fused to heavier things is in a supernova. So if a star blows up, it explodes in a supernova explosion. That can actually have enough neutrons uh, in order to make... So supernova explosion makes heavier elements than iron. So I think this is something really quite spectacular to think about. Because so what happens then is, of course, now we've explained how these elements were made, but how do they end up as part of us? If you think about it then, these elements that were made, those were all made in the center of a star. And what happened, of course, is when those stars either blew up or shed their, their layers of gas, those layers of gas were sort of spread out throughout the universe. And those pieces then maybe were formed to make another star, and those maybe blew up and made heavier things. So each of these elements are sort of constantly enriched by extra elements and extra things, and those eventually formed us. So quite literally, we're all made of stardust. I think that is really awesome. Um, and I, um, there's a scientist named Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he actually explained something I thought really eloquently. He actually said that, you know, we're, we're all connected. So um, in one of his videos, I thought it was really nice how he explained it. He said, well, we're all connected to each other biologically you know, because we're all similar species. But we're also connected to each other chemically. Um, we're also connected to the Earth chemically. And on top of that, we're connected to the rest of the universe atomically because our atoms were made in similar ways to the other stuff of the universe. So that means that we came from the centers of stars. So the universe is not only sort of part of us, I mean, we're part of it, but the universe is part of us as well. I think that's really, really interesting to look at. 
Now we can go a little bit further and talk about what goes on inside the core of a main sequence star. Remember what main sequence means? That's a star that is happily fusing hydrogen to helium. That's what's happening in a main sequence star. And the main sequence stars, those are here. These are the ones we're talking about here. These are the, these are the stars in the main sequence. So the actual process that happens, uh, at least one of them, is called the PP cycle. And that stands for proton-proton cycle. So this is the, we're going to go through a little bit of the details of how hydrogen can actually be made into helium. It's not just a sort of one simple thing. It actually has a few little steps. So just to show you, so we have a hydrogen. Now if you remember the bottom number right here, that's always the number of protons. And the top number here, that's the number of protons plus neutrons. And so in this case right here, it has one proton. It has no neutrons, so that means it's a proton. That means it's just a one here. So this is hydrogen 1, sometimes called just a proton. So if you take one hydrogen plus another hydrogen, then you get, and this is kind of fun when you do these things, you just have to add up all the numbers and make sure they all sort of equal out. Turns out you get 1H2. That's called deuterium. Um, but of course you get something else. Now you get what's called uh, beta plus. Sometimes this is called a positron beta. Um, of course, then you also get a regular neutrino. I'm trying to write this Greek letter nu here. And of course, you get energy. And when I say energy, that is going to be given off in the form of light and heat. And that's sort of what gives us these stars making lots of light for us. So if you look at these numbers, the number of neutrons, oh, sorry, the number of um, well, nucleons here, that's what these are called, that's the protons plus neutrons, those should add up. So 1 plus 1 equals 2 plus 0, okay, that works out, great. And 1 plus 1 on the bottom, that better equal 1 plus 1. Yep, it does. And this here is a regular neutrino, it's called, and plus we get energy. Now, we've only explained now how did it get from hydrogen to H2. That's not helium yet, so we have to keep going. And it turns out you can take an H2... And that can combine with a hydrogen, and those will make a helium-3, it's called. Now, helium-3 is not the one we're looking for. We actually want to be making regular helium, which is helium-4, it's called. So it's got two protons, and it's got two neutrons, so that's why 2 plus 2 is 4. So we, we want to be making helium-4. That's really the goal here. So we've made helium-3. But of course, in order to balance this all out, well, you also need to, let's see, I mean, this 3 equals 2 plus 1, so that works. This 2 equals 1 plus 1. But it turns out you also make uh, gamma rays. So that's just, that's a type of light. And of course, you also get energy. All right, that happens. Now, the thing is, you need to have this whole process right here. This has to be multiplied by 2. In other words, you have this happen twice. If you notice, you started off with two hydrogen atoms, and you end up making all these things right here, and then you needed an extra hydrogen here in order to kick into this, plus the end result of this. You mix those together, and you end up with helium-3. Now, it turns out for the next step, you need another helium-3. So imagine you do this whole step once, do this whole step again, because then you're left with two helium-3s in total. And so the key thing here, then, is that the helium-3 plus another helium-3, those are going to combine to make a helium-4. That's the one we wanted to make. Uh, it's also going to make two regular hydrogens and, of course, give you some energy. Again, that's going to be in the form of light. Now, we have to make sure these numbers work out. So 4 plus uh, 2 times 1, so that's 4 plus 2, that equals 6, and 3 plus 3 also equals 6, so that works. 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 plus 2 times 1, that's also 4, so this, this at least balances out. So this is one of the PP cycles, this is a proton-proton cycle. Now this is not the only thing that goes on in the center of a main sequence star. There's lots of other things that can happen. Turns out there's different branches of the PP cycle. So there's a PP branch 2 and 3. There's all sorts of other things that happen. And later on in other uh, types of stars you could even have other uh, things going on. But the main sort of 
simplest thing that's happening is this proton-proton cycle. And this at least explains one of the ways in which hydrogen can end up making helium. So this is happening all the time in stars, at least at the center, in the core of a main sequence star. So like our own sun, for example, which is sitting right here, that one is doing exactly this. This is what's happening every single second. You have lots and lots of kilograms of mass that's being converted into energy, but you're also at the same time making helium-4.